Здравия. Здравия. Е, Ради да забоите в Казани. К съжаление, виня русского языка не хватит. Е, так я буду на английском. Е, я надеюсь, что меня не поймете. Я Габи, бакмахтер, аккаунт-менеджер от Digital Marketing Agency called Yellowhead. And this will be the topics that I would like us to review today. Um, so I'll briefly introduce uh, our activities in the agency. Um, generally, our presentation will be focusing on tips and best practices for the AdMob network. Um, and the, these tips will be divided to a few sections, uh, as you can see here. And um, we'll have a couple uh, of tips for each of the sections. So a bit about ourselves, about the agency. Uh, we are an international agency. We are working mainly with the US market, but also uh, with uh, Europe and uh, Australia, and basically all over the world, uh, maybe except Russia. Um, We can define our activities to three different departments. Uh, inbound, which uh, contains SEO uh, team, ASO team, and social media marketing. The performance team uh, is working mainly with Google and uh, Facebook uh, and networks. We are very big partners of these two networks. And we also uh, uh, make uh, account manager management on Apple Ads, Instagram, and Twitter, which have relatively lower uh, volumes. And we have also a creative team, uh, video editors, and graphic designers, and that creating our ads. And a bit of our uh, clients. So basically, they're uh, spread out through uh, different industries. A uh, very big part of our portfolio is uh, social and casual gaming. They're working basically with uh, the biggest uh, players in this uh, industry. And we also have uh, clients from the multi uh, multiplayer uh, uh, industry, e-commerce, finance, utilities and transportation. You can see some of our uh, uh, clients listed below. Yeah. So um, the AdMob network is owned by uh, Google. It uh, consists from millions of apps, which are divided into different categories. Each of these categories, uh, not each of them, but some of them are divided into subcategories. Uh, the games category will be probably the, the biggest, and uh, it's divided into subcategories. And so the main uh, advantages of this AdMob network and why uh, it's all such a big uh, part of uh, our agency activities is two main uh, reasons. So first of all, it would be the operation system under the, and iOS. I assume that you all know that this, is, uh, this are the biggest operation system with the highest volumes. And uh, usually our clients are focused and interested in high volumes, uh, reaching high amount of players. So uh, this is one of the reasons that AdMob is the, usually the uh, wanted uh, network for us. And the second w uh, reason would be is that uh, the network is based on Google's technology, uh, which is usually very uh, advanced, uh, Google scanners, Google's robots, and uh, uh, very uh, advanced technology. The tips that I will share with you are very much uh, relevant for the AdMob network, uh, obviously, but also for other channels as well, and maybe even for any type of uh, marketing activity. On the arrow. On the arrow. On the And so first tip. Um, I basically just reviewed the targeting options that uh, AdMob uh, network uh, uh, includes. Not all of them will be relevant for each product, so we obviously need to uh, think and consider which one will be relevant uh, for you. But these are all uh, in there, in the AdMob network, so we'll just briefly uh, review them. Paying users. Paying users are users that AdMob holds the data about them that they previously 
purchased an app in one of the Play Stores, Google's or uh, iTunes, and therefore there are a high probability for them to purchase an app. So if your product is, uh, is not a free one, uh, you need to pay for it, so this will be a good targeting uh, for you. The next targeting app spenders are users that uh, is similar, it's, but it's not users that uh, purchased an app, but users that perform the purchase within an app. So they uh, bought more coins, or bought a premium product, or wanted to go to uh, uh, lock, uh, unlock a stage. So app spenders is uh, also a very good targeting if you have one of these uh, uh, targets. Um, and then these two sections are uh, basically what AdMob Network is consisted from. Uh, app categories, as I said, uh, there are about 40 categories which the apps are divided to. So we wanna, we'll, uh, the next uh, slide will discuss about how to choose uh, the, the relevant targeting. Users' interest, no, not yet. Users' interest is uh, sort of a profile that's being built for each user based on the in, based on the apps that he previously installed. So uh, each user is sort of being classified, and therefore the uh, interest can. Uh, help you to target the relevant users. There are uh, a high correlation between the categories and the interests. Uh, the last two um, options are usually have a bit lower volumes, but might be relevant for you as well. So the new devices option, uh, the, uh, target new devices. So uh, these devices are probably have less uh, apps installed, uh, uh, sort of clean uh, data. So if you're willing to be the first one on their device, uh, this will be a good uh, uh, option for you. The uh, last option, active users gamers, is users which uh, there is a, a data about them, they, they have been recently active. So it uh, uh, increases the probability of them to use your apps once they actually installed it. And so how you choose from these all uh, options? So. I guess that this tip is, as I said, will be relevant for even a, a bigger uh, range. You need to think who will be the most relevant audience for you. So uh, the AdMob networks enables you to target apps that are uh, that are working in a similar uh, industry as you, which probably have users that you are willing to target. So, for example, if you are a card game, it's, it makes a lot of sense for you to target a uh, cards game and the uh, uh, targeting options in network uh, allows you this. Um, but I will say something that a bit contradict this and uh, mention that it might be worth a while to keep on a low, uh, uh, a low part of your activity, on a low share of your activity and target a wider range of users because the results might surprise you. Uh, and you might find that uh, area which is allegedly not supposed to be relevant for you, actually performing well and uh, generating good uh, performance. Targeting. So, this is a bit uh, further step. Once you have your account running and your campaigns uh, uh, bringing the volumes, you want to keep an eye on the performance and you want to analyze how this uh, targeting is working. Each of the categories that we mentioned can be divided is actually uh, can be broken down to the specific apps which are included in this uh, in this category. The AdWords uh, enables you to download the report on the app level. So you want to uh, analyze these uh, apps and uh, see if the performance that they are bringing uh, is aligned with your targets. And for example, since all this uh, ad mob activity is usually based on CPA, on uh, on the conversion optimizer, then some of the uh, placements, some of the apps might bring you high volumes, uh, a lot of users. However, the ROI performance uh, might be not as good as you, uh, look, you are looking for. So if these apps are holding a big share of your uh, spend, um, they are uh, blocking other apps that might uh, achieve better ROI, from running, uh, so you might want to pass them or exclude them or to separate them to a different ad group and uh, um, and so on. Uh, 
so as I said, uh, uh, ad hoc campaigns are usually uh, relying on CPA bidding. Two important tips uh, for this case. Uh, first of all, the frequency. You don't want to change the bids too frequent. Uh, the best practice that we are familiar with is to change the bid every three days, uh, not more frequent than that. And to be honest, if everything is going well and you're happy with the volumes and you're happy with the performance, then even don't change it at all, just keep it uh, running and maintain the, the, uh, the traffic. The second uh, uh, tip will be the ranges, the rate which you change your uh, CPA bidding. You don't want to change it in too big uh, um, uh, percentage, so you want to keep it somewhere between 2, 10, 20% is even quite aggressive. And by changing it in too much, uh, uh, in too much difference to your current uh, CPA, we might might reset the the ad group or the campaign, uh, and therefore your data, which been accumulated uh, up until then, might be lost. And the algo uh, will have to uh, readjust and work uh, from the beginning, and uh, it's sort of a last. You don't wanna uh, make it happen. Um, so this is basically a tip uh, for uh, products and accounts or campaigns who are looking for a bit cheaper uh, a CPI, cost per user. And um, it's a different campaign type. Uh, it's called Universal Lab Campaign. It was released uh, about a year ago. Uh, and it basically serves uh, your ads, your creatives on five different uh, channels, as you can see the long example, the search uh, engine, the Play Store, the AdMob, the MGDN, and the YouTube. And it's a very easy to set campaign, only four lines of text, a few creatives and videos, and you're good to go, set the CPA and budget. So uh, you can really set up this campaign without no hassle. Um, however, uh, I do want to mention that due to its uh, relatively high volumes and low CPIs, the performance of uh, such a campaign in terms of ROI is usually low. Um, so again, this will be a very good tip uh, and a very good uh, way to generate volumes, to bring more users, but their ROI uh, might not be as good as uh, a classic ad hoc campaigns. <laughs> Creatives. Um, Basically, uh, the, you being presented on the, the product, the campaigns are being presented on the ad hoc networks by your ads. So it could be banners, it could be text ads, and it could be videos. Uh, and our tip is to closely monitor the performance of these uh, creatives. Um, as you can probably guess, uh, uh, a specific set might perform very well as you upload it and it's starting to be served. However, as time uh, goes by, the performance might drop, and you should uh, keep an eye on this performance and basically analyze it based on your key performance indicators uh, if you are satisfied so, uh, with the performance. So you might uh, make the analysis based on the upper funnel performance according to its uh, CTR and CVR, or uh, if your focus is very much in the in-app events, so ROI and FTD rate, so this will be the indicators that uh, you will uh, make the analysis based on. Um, and once you see a, a non-performing, a poor-performing uh, uh, set, you would like to pause it and to upload a new one. So we are usually trying to create a new set every second week. And to upload it, it's very important to refresh the creatives and make sure you uh, in uh, making a uh, new uh, creative uh, sets uh, each time. Uh, it's also, uh, I would recommend to uh, pay attention to the designs as itself. Um, if you see a set uh, or a theme that are working well in terms of maybe uh, some feature from your app or a, a call to action or maybe a, uh, something specific in the design that is working well, then you definitely want to keep on that line and uh, uh, create uh, more uh, sets uh, with this uh, design. Um, this is just uh, uh, 
something also that yeah, it's important to pay attention to. The AdMob the network suggests something uh, like 30 ad sizes that can be served on the network. Uh, it's obviously was much lower in the beginning, but since there are uh, many devices that are being released to the market uh, as time uh, passed by, then uh, AdMob and Google want to uh, be there and to be able to serve the ads properly and uh, to uh, adjust the sizes to the screens. Um, we are usually dividing the, uh, the banners to uh, three, uh, three types. Uh, so there are the interstitial that usually take the whole screen uh, um, fully the screen. There are the stripes that take just the part of the screen. And there are the squares, as you can see in the examples, that uh, are quite big, however not, uh, not uh, displayed on the whole uh, uh, screen. And yeah, basically uh, it's a sort of a cost-benefit matter because once you already create uh, the design that you want and you already have sort of the prototype, then resizing the ads and cutting the, the other size, it shouldn't be much of a hassle. So once you already have the idea and you have the initial design, uh, you should definitely make sure uh, to cut the other sizes. The conversion optimizer will be the one that uh, choose the relevant size and will push the traffic to the sizes. And it might be different from campaign to campaign, from set to set. Um, so yeah, um, as more uh, sizes, as better. Optimization. So this is uh, something that will be relevant once you have, uh, uh, once you've been active for a, for a certain amount of time and you have already that accumulated um, and you already sort of have the indications and the estimation of what a user worth for you. Um, so at this stage you will usually uh, divide your campaigns to a few tiers. Uh, based on the performance, so uh, for example, uh, users that are, uh, have a high performance in terms of ROI uh, and in-app uh, uh, events, then you will be probably willing to pay more for them. And those who have a lower performance, you will be willing to pay less. So you want to divide these campaigns, set the calculate and uh, analyze the price that they are worth for you, and set it as a CPA, and basically from that point and, and on, the optimizer will do the job and uh, bring you the traffic uh, that you're willing to. Um, so this is basically three tips uh, that explain why it's so important to keep a very close eye on the performance. We are obviously, uh, our account managers are uh, following the accounts closely on a daily basis. Um, and there are three uh, cases that are justifying uh, to, to do so. So first of all, you can uh, all of a sudden wake up one day to see how did you do yesterday and you can see that your spend and volumes dropped uh, in 50%. And while you investigate and you're uh, uh, trying uh, with your resources, uh, with, the, uh, with the help of your resources to understand what happened, you will find out that a new, a new player joined the game, uh, possibly your competitor, and this is the reason uh, for the drop you're uh, experiencing. Uh, also, the, the network, the AdMob, uh, as I previously mentioned, it's uh, advanced technology, and uh, the metrics are changing, the components of the auction, uh, which uh, the, this is uh, how your ads are being displayed, might change, so you want to make sure that all of your settings are adjusted to the most relevant and uh, correct settings, the best practices. Uh, so it's important to make sure you are not behind in this term. Uh, the last one will be uh, something that is more relevant to your side. If you are know that you made any changes within your product, within your stages or your uh, features, then you also want to make sure that the uh, users that you are uh, bringing to the app are still relevant. Maybe you want to change uh, somewhat the targeting that you are using. So uh, again, very keep a close eye. Uh, definitely keep a close eye on the performance. Um, ad delivery basically, I would suggest two options. The first one will be standard, um, less aggressive uh, mode. 
which uh, will spread out the, the uh, display of the ads throughout the day. The uh, second option is accelerated, it's a much more uh, uh, aggressive uh, uh, mode. Uh, which in this case the optimizer would just try to bring you as more volumes as possible uh, and what might result in uh, that your budget uh, will end before uh, uh, the day ends. Uh, now you should consider two points. Uh, first of all, uh, your budget. If you, want, if you can afford yourself uh, uh, to, to, to run with high budget, then you want to make sure your budget is high enough uh, in order to prevent it from uh, uh, being uh, uh, ended before the day ends. The second matter is the importance of the time of the day for your app. So if, for example, you're a game app um, and it's usually being played at the evening hours, so you want to make sure that you have enough budget uh, to get volumes at this time of the day. So in this case, the accelerated mode might be uh, not a good practice and you want to keep it standard. Uh, targeting the me measurement, this is actually a tip that will be probably relevant before you start your activity and it's also relevant for all type of uh, online uh, marketing activity. Um, we recommend you to uh, think properly and consider which events you're willing to track uh, whether it's a uh, level, certain level that the user by you would like to reach a deposit, mm -hmm. the following purchases. So you want to make sure that you can track all of these levels properly before you launching your activity. You want to test it. You want to make sure that each of the events being properly monitored. You want to make sure that your system, whether it's your BI or your tracking system, are uh, connected properly that all the reporting is uh, being fired back to the all systems. It's a very crucial stage before launching your activity. If you have a problem with this issue, then the optimizer might not work as you want it to be, and that's a shame. Um, another matter regarding this uh, measurement tip, um, you want to make sure you can uh, track the data on the lowest level in, in the hierarchy of your uh, uh, campaigns. So you want to make sure you can drill down and get the performance on the lowest level. So it will be the keyword, the specific ad, or the uh, placement, the app. Mm. Uh, once you have this data, you can climb up and uh, indicate about the campaign's performance, but not another way around. You can break down uh, campaign level data to a keyword unless you actually have it. But show specific. Что-то перевести. Hello, Gabriel. My name is Artem. Uh, tell me, please, uh, if I have product, uh, we should adapt it uh, only for Android, uh, not for iOS. Uh, can we cooperate with you? We should probably discuss it personally. The answer is yes. Um, honestly, since that mob network is uh, Google's product, which you probably know is uh, also on Google, uh, Android, sorry. So the targeting options and the optimizer usually work better for Android. So in your case, it's, uh, it's good. And definitely we can discuss later about that. Great, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.